Hello and welcome to another episode of the Survival Handbook. I'm Terrifier and today I have seven super dope tech items that you should consider unlocking before any other tech items. I recommend checking out last week's episode called Tech Tier Explained before watching this to help eliminate confusion with Tech Tier. That being said, if you want to grow your skills and all sorts of other ARC related stuff, subscribe now so you don't miss anything. The first item I want to talk about today is the Tech Generator. It's not very exciting, but it's vital for your base. Non-tech generators require you to run power lines to and from electrical devices for them to function, which can leave a lot of nasty wires around your base. Tech generators solve these problems and then some. You'll want to place your tech generator somewhere in the middle of your base because it powers all electrical devices within a particular radius that's dictated by the settings in its radial menu. The maximum distance it can electrify is pretty significant, so I strongly recommend taking the time to find the proper radius. The farther the radius, the more element or element shards the generator will consume, so finding the perfect distance will benefit you in the long run. Additionally, tech generators are the only generators that power tech devices, so focus on unlocking it early if you want some of the other items in this list. You can unlock the tech generator tech gram by beating the Megapithecus on beta, the Manticore on gamma, Rockwell on gamma, the Crystal Wyvern Queen on gamma, or the Desert Titan. The next item on the list is the full tech suit. The tech suit is actually five tech items, but they're easier to talk about as a group, so that's what we're doing. As far as armor is concerned, it works the same way all other armors work. What's special about the tech suit is that you get a lot of unique abilities that basically turn you into Iron Man. The tech helmet allows you to utilize a series of practical visual effects, from highlighting enemies to night vision. You can cycle through the modes by double tapping E, and if you hold E for two seconds, you can toggle that mode on and off. That alone is pretty dope, but it also passively gives you the ability to breathe underwater. Add the tech chest piece and you'll have remarkably high mobility underwater because of a badass jetpack strapped to the back of it. You can double tap jump to do a huge jump and if you hold down the jump button, you can fly around. Holding shift in the air puts the jetpack into hover mode and will allow you to maintain altitude during flight or take precise shots from the sky. Combine these abilities with the tech leggings and you're off to the races, like literally. Holding down the melee keybind activates super speed mode and you basically turn into Sonic the Hedgehog. You can run straight through trees and boulders and even run on water. Feel free to take this to the skies with your tech chest piece too. Hover mode on the chest piece, plus super speed mode on the leggings, and you've got full on Mach 1 speeds. Adding the tech boots will eliminate all fall damage and even let you run up and down steep inclines like this. You'll see a blue glow around the boots to let you know they've been activated. Finally, the tech gloves will allow you to perform a super punch that deals 40 base damage and scales with your melee stat. It has a small area of effect, so you can strike multiple targets at once with it. Don't forget to use a tech sword with the super punch for extra damage. All right, so there are many bosses you could potentially beat to get the full suit of tech armor. So the first link in the description will take you directly to the tech armor wiki. Next up, we've got the Tech Sleeping Pod. This one is an Aberration exclusive, so if you want it, you'll have to beat Rockwell on Gamma. Sleeping Pods work exactly like a bed with a few nifty features. Firstly, the respawn timer on Sleeping Pods is reduced compared to beds, so you can spawn in them more often. Secondly, if you lay in the Sleeping Pod, you'll rapidly regenerate health, thirst, and hunger, all while reducing torpor and boosting XP gain. It'll cure all diseases and even protect you from the elements. Basically, it's like a reset button on your stats. The only catch is that it does have to remain powered by a tech generator to be used. The fourth item I want to talk about today is the tech transmitter. This one isn't very flashy either, but it's definitely one of those convenience items you didn't know you needed. Kind of like those riding lawnmowers that every dad has ever wanted. Anyway, it's basically an obelisk. You can upload your dinos, items, and characters from a tech transmitter to other arcs. If you're on PC and have S+, you can even teleport to boss arenas from the comfort of your own home. The tech transmitter Techgram unlocks when you beat the dragon on beta or the crystal wyvern queen on beta. At number five, we've got the tech hover skiff. This is probably one of my favorites just because it's so dang cool. It can cover some serious ground by utilizing element to hover and fly while providing a suitable deck to carry creatures on. This actually works like a platform saddle or raft, so you can place all sorts of structures on it to improve your workflow. To add to the coolness of the hover skiff, it also has a tractor beam that can immobilize and carry creatures, like the ones aliens have. 
there are so many possible uses for a tractor beam in arc like you could use it for taming raiding defense offense long distance dino eating contests the list goes on and on it can carry items weighing up to 16,000 units, so it's perfect for resource farming and hauling items. There are a ton of controls though, so you'll either have to experiment or click on the second link in the description. If you want this one, you'll have to beat the Corrupted Master Controller on Gamma. Next up, we've got the Tech Teleporter. This one is for the most convenient fast traveling you could ever ask for. Tech Teleporters work pretty much exactly the same as beds as far as how the fast travel works in the interface. The difference is that it'll teleport whatever is actually on the teleporter, including wild creatures, tamed creatures, and other survivors. You'll find an option in the teleporter called Enable Public Transportation. This allows any and all survivors to use the teleporter as long as they've unlocked the tech ram. Regardless, each teleporter has to be powered by a tech generator, making it a costly form of fast travel, but it's totally worth it in my opinion, especially in PvE. Each teleporter has to be placed on foundations, but only underneath the activation post. Unfortunately, you run the risk of getting your creature stuck between the teleporter and the ground if you don't put all the foundations down, so use that knowledge at your own risk. This is a pretty useful item, so you can only get it from any of these bosses on alpha difficulty. Dragon, Manticore, Rockwell, Crystal Wyvern Queen, Motor Master of the Ocean, and the Forest Titan. Finally, at number 7, we have the Tech Rifle. One of the most interesting weapons in ARC. It shoots slow-moving, explosive laser bullets at your target and consumes element when fired. In fact, you'll be able to fire 50 shots with a single piece of element. Tech rifles do a pretty decent amount of damage too. Like, I was able to melt this Pariser because of the super high fire rate. It might do less damage per bullet than other rifles like the long neck rifle, but it does way more damage over time because of the rate of fire. You'll never ever have to reload a tech rifle either, but you will have to make sure it doesn't overheat. There are easy to see heat indicators visible from first and third person, so make sure you're keeping an eye on it during combat. Otherwise, you'll have to wait for a cooldown animation to finish before being able to fire again. Additionally, the tech rifle boasts a zoomable night vision scope that allows it to be used quite well at night if I do say so myself. Use this with a tech suit and you're well on your way to a path of destruction. It's important to note that the tech rifle doesn't have the best durability. Normally every 20 shots reduces its durability by one, but if any splash damage hits a mineable resource like a tree or rock, it'll reduce its durability by another two, so be careful. If you're trying to use this for raids, understand that the tech rifle can't damage auto turrets for balancing purposes, but you can definitely use it to destroy their metal base. So, you know, use that however you want. Do you agree with this list? What did I miss? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to subscribe for more and leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for your time today and we'll see you in the next video. Still here? Damn, you're amazing. Here's a bonus item. The tech force field protects your base with a powerful force field.